So today's video is entitled Ballistic Pendulum Example Problems, and in this video we're going to go over three separate example problems using ballistic pendulum. And in each of the problems, we're going to be using conservation of momentum and conservation of energy. Before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step-by-Step -step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You can subscribe, click the notifications bell, leave a comment, give a thumbs up, and don't forget to share. Now, I also made a video previously with uh, an explanation of how the ballistic pendulum works, and you can link to that video in the upper right-hand corner of this video. As I said, we're going to go over three different problems, and the first example we have here is we have a 35-gram bullet. It's traveling with an unknown velocity. Now, as you might know, ballistic pendulum are often used to determine the velocity of a bullet and the velocity of the bullet just before it strikes the pendulum. And we're going to do that in this problem right here. And that velocity of an unknown velocity, when it strikes the uh, pendulum, which has a mass of 4.50 kil kilograms, it's embedded in the ballistic pendulum. And if the pendulum rises to a height of 0 0.65 meters, we want to know what was the velocity of the bullet right before it struck the ballistic pendulum. So we have the bullet. It's going to strike the pendulum, embed itself in the pendulum, and then the pendulum is going to swing up. And we know that there was a change in height of 0 0.65 meters, and we want to know what was the velocity of the bullet. Now, the first step in this problem, we're going to use conservation of energy, and we're going to use conservation of energy to find the velocity of the bullet pendulum system. The bullet is m1, the pendulum is m2, and this prime mark tells us that we're going to be finding the velocity of that combined system after the bullet embeds itself into the ballistic pendulum. So conservation of energy tells us that the kinetic energy plus the potential energy before, okay, and I have B here, actually this is at the bottom. So the potential energy at the bottom plus the kinetic energy at the bottom is going to be equal to the potential energy at the top, this would be the top, plus the kinetic energy at the top. Now at the bottom, the ballistic pendulum is at its lowest position, so it has no height, and therefore it has no potential energy, so that term is zero. Well, when the, when the pendulum swings up to its maximum height, it's going to stop for a moment, and then it's going to have no velocity. So the velocity at the top is zero, and therefore if the velocity is zero, then at the top, the kinetic energy is also going to be zero. So that simplifies to the kinetic energy at the bottom. It's going to be equal to the potential energy at the top, and the kinetic energy, as you know, is one-half mv squared, so we have one-half. Now, this mass is the mass of the combined system because the bullet has embedded itself into the pendulum. So this is the mass of the bullet and the pendulum combined times their velocity. And we're going to square that velocity. And again, that prime tells us this is after the collision. And then we're going to be set that equal to the potential energy. This m is also the mass combined of the bullet and the pendulum. And this is g acceleration due to gravity, and this is the height which we were given as 0 0.65 meters. So we're solving this equation for this velocity right here, the combined velocity of the bullet and the pendulum after the collision. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cancel the masses because on both sides we have the mass, and on both sides that mass is the same. It's the mass of the bullet and the pendulum combined because the bullet is once again embedded in the pendulum. And therefore, we can set that, simplify that equation to one half the velocity squared is equal to g times h. And we're solving for the velocity. So what we're going to do to simplify this equation to get the velocity out of here is we're going to multiply first by 2 to get rid of the one half, take the square root to get rid of the velocity squared. And we are left with the velocity of the bullet and the pendulum right after the collision. It's going to be equal to the square root of 2 times g times h. Okay, so we're going to plug the values in. 2 is 2. g is 9.81 meters per second squared. The height which we were given is 0 0.65 meters. And if we do that on our calculator, we get that the velocity of the pendulum and the bullet right after the collision is 3.57 meters per second. Now I want to point out we're looking for the velocity of the bullet. This is not the velocity of the bullet. This is the velocity of this combined system of the bullet and the pendulum right after the bullet embeds itself in the pendulum and in a sense right before the pendulum starts to move up. 
Now we're going to use that value of 3.57 meters per second on the next slide. Okay, here's the value we got on the previous slide. And we're now we're going to use step two, we're going to use conservation of momentum to find V1. M1 is the bullet, so V1 is the velocity of the bullet, and we're going to get that before the collision. All right, so we want to know what is the velocity, M1, which is V1, and we're going to use conservation of momentum, which is, tells us that P, this is a symbol for momentum, the momentum before is going to be equal to the momentum after. Now we have two things, the uh, bullet and the pendulum, so we have the momentum before is the mass of the bullet times its velocity, this is what we're going to be solving for, plus the mass of the pendulum times its velocity, and that's going to be equal to those two mass times the volumes after the collision. Now, before the collision, the pendulum isn't moving, it has no velocity, and therefore the momentum of the pendulum before the collision is zero, so this term goes to zero, and then we can simplify that by just m1v1 on the left-hand side, and then on the right-hand side, because the bullet is embedded into the pendulum, this vol velocity and this velocity are the same. So we can factor that out. We just have m1 plus m2 times the combined velocity or the velocity of the combined bullet pendulum system after the collision. That's what the prime mark tells us like that. Okay. Now, once again, we're going to be solving for this velocity. So we're simply going to divide both sides by the mass m1, the mass of the bullet, and we get that the velocity of the bullet before the collision is the sum of the two masses times their velocity after the collision divided by the mass of the bullet. Plug those values in and you get 0 0.35 kilograms, you got to convert grams to kilograms, plus 4.5 kilograms, the ballistic pendulum, times the value of those two, the velocity of those two, uh, the, that system both right after the collision, which we got on the previous slide, divided by m1, which is simply the mass of the bullet in kilograms, okay? And then we get that the velocity of the bullet right before the collision is right here, and that's 463 meters per second, okay? So there you go, that was problem number one, where we use step one to find conservation of momentum, and step two, excuse me, step one, we use conservation of energy, and step two, we use conservation of momentum to get the velocity. All right, now we can go on and do problem number two. Okay, now we're gonna go on and we are going to do example problem number two. Now in the first example, we found the velocity of the bullet and in this problem, we're going to find the change in the height of the ballistic pendulum because when that bullet strikes that pendulum and is embedded in the pendulum, the pendulum is obviously gonna swing up to a new height and we want to know what is that change in the height if we're given the initial velocity. So in this case, we have a bullet, 55 grams. It's traveling with a velocity of 950 meters per second. It strikes the ballistic pendulum. It's embedded in it. And the pendulum, if it has a mass of 6.75 kilograms, we want to know what will be the change in the height of the pendulum. Now, in this video, we're going to do the opposite order. In the previous video, we used conservation of energy first. And in this video, we're going to use conservation of momentum first to find the velocity of the combined bullet pendulum system. So conservation of momentum is, once again, just simply the momentum before the collision, and then it's going to be equal to the momentum after the collision. The momentum is, of course, m1, the mass of the bullet, times its velocity is equal to plus the mass of the pendulum times its velocity. That's the momentum before. And then we have the momentum after the collision. Now, once again, we're going to be want to solve for V12, the velocity of the combined system. When we start right before the bullet strikes that pendulum, the pendulum is not moving, has no velocity, so therefore it has no momentum. So we can simplify our equation. And once again, the velocity of the bullet and the velocity of the pendulum are going to be the same because the bullet is embedded in the pendulum. In this case, we want to solve for V12. So V12 is simply going to be equal to M1V1. We divide both sides by the sum of the masses, and that's going to be M1V1 divided by the sum of the two masses. So we can plug those values in. The bullet was 55 grams. We've got to convert that into kilograms. We were given its initial velocity, and then this is the mass of the two objects, the bullet and the ballistic pendulum, and we come up 
with that the velocity of the bullet pendulum system right after the collision is 7.68 meters per second. Okay, we're going to carry that over with us to the next slide. This is the velocity we found on the previous slide. And now we're going to use conservation of energy in this case to find the change in the height. Now we're kind of like thinking a little bit more just like a basic pendulum problem, which we've done before. We know the velocity here. We can know the velocity here and the potential energy. We can figure out uh, the height from the potential energy. So we're going to say that once again for conservation of energy, just like in the previous example, the potential energy at the bottom plus the kinetic energy is equal to the potential energy at the top plus its kinetic energy. And once again, at the bottom, it has no potential energy because it has no height. And at the top, it has no kinetic energy because it has no velocity. And it's going to be Ke at the bottom is going to be equal to the Pe at the top. Now we know the velocity and we know in here, of course, we're going to have our height for our Ke our potential energy. And this is the height that we're solving for. So we're simply going to divide, oh, we can cancel out the masses again because the mass on one side for the potential energy and the kinetic energy, these two masses are the same. It's the combined mass of the bullet and the pendulum. Cancel those and we get that the height is going to be equal to one half v squared. We have over here one half v squared simply divided by g. Okay, I changed the one half into 0 0.5. Those two things are equal to each other. Looks, looks a little better like that, I believe. And then we plug our values in. We have one half times 7.68 meters per second squared. That's the combined velocity that we found on the previous slide, divided by, once again, the acceleration due to gravity. And we get that the change in the height is exactly three meters. Okay? So in the first video, we found, excuse me, in the first video, in the first example, we found the change and then we found the velocity. And in this video, in this uh, problem, we found the height. Now, we're going to do one more. And in this problem, we have the bullet, which has 45 grams for its mass. It's moving with a velocity of 650 meters per second. It strikes the pendulum. In this case, it's going to travel straight through the pendulum, losing some of its energy as it does that. It emerges with a velocity of 425 meters per second. And if the pendulum has a mass of 3.25 kilograms, what is going to be the change in the height of the pendulum? Now, this problem is different because when the bullet strikes the pendulum, it travels straight through, giving some of its energy to the ballistic pendulum and causing it to raise up to a new height also. And we want to know what is that change in height. Okay, for this problem, we're first going to use conservation of momentum, and we're going to find the velocity of the pendulum after the collision. Okay, just the pendulum, not the bullet. The bullet goes straight through. All right, and the pendulum is going to swing up, and we want to know what is its uh, velocity going to be right here, right before it starts to move up. Okay, so we got uh, conservation of momentum again, mass times velocity plus mass times velocity for before the collision, mass and velocity after the collision, and we're going to say once again that the pendulum has no momentum at the bottom, it has no velocity before the bullet strikes it, and then we can simplify that. And we can say that m1 times v1 after plus m2 times v2 after is going to be equal to m1 times v1 before. Now, in this case, they're moving with a different velocity, so we can't factor out the velocity. But we do want to solve for v2. Okay, So now we get that v2 after the collision is going to be equal to m1 times v1 before minus v1, the velocity of the bullet, after, divided by the mass of the pendulum. Okay, you can see here, all I did was that I moved this over to the other side. I have m1 v1 minus m1 v1 primed, and then I factored out the m1, and I divided by the mass 2, the mass of the pendulum. So now I'm going to plug the values in. I have the mass of the bullet. The mass before, excuse me, the velocity of the pen, of the bullet before, the velocity of the bullet after, divided by the mass of the pendulum, and we get that the velocity of the pendulum right after the bullet goes through it, but really before it starts to move up, is 3.12 meters per second. Okay, once again, just like in the previous example, we now know its velocity. We're just going to use conservation of energy, and 
same thing, no potential energy, no kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is going to be equal to the potential energy at the top, and we can solve for the height, because now we know this, which we found in the previous slide, and the masses cancel again. You can see these problems get a little repetitious, and we can solve for the height, which is one-half times the velocity squared divided by g, okay? We simply have one-half velocity squared. We're solving for h, divide by g, and you get this equation. And then you plug the values in, one-half. Okay, this is the velocity that we found on the previous slide. And then this is the acceleration due to gravity once again. And you get that it moves up exactly one-half meter. Okay, so there you go. We did three different examples. You'll notice that there's kind of same, and a lot of the conditions are the same in each of those examples. You have to know when to use the conservation of energy or the conservation of momentum first, and then it's just canceling and solving for the appropriate variables that you're looking for. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things. Subscribe to my uh, channel, Step-by-Step -step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Subscribe, click the notifications bell. Please give me a thumbs up. Please leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of the videos. And of course, don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends and show them just how much you care. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.